Hi guys, how are you? I hope you all have been good. I'm so sorry, I can see Ernest laughing, so I'm nervous. <laughs> um, hi. Oh, hi, uh, do, hi. Do you wanna, hmm? do you wanna um, share your screen? You can get started. Oh yeah, for sure. Let me know if you guys can see it. Um, I've had trouble practicing, so. Um, oh no, I can't see it all of a sudden. That's not good. Um, okay, give me like <laughs> one second. Sorry guys, technical difficulties. Um, I'm so sorry. Ah. Okay. Can you see it? Yeah? Yeah, perfect. Okay, cool. That's all you see, right? Just the, just the, you don't see any other windows or tabs open. I think we can still see the other ones, the windows and tabs. Yeah. Oh, wait, do you see Messenger open? Sorry, just in case you guys, like, message me, I don't want everyone to, like, see it. <laughs> we, we can see, like, all, like, 20 of tabs. tabs. <laughs> Um, okay, I have Messenger like right next. To, okay, okay. No, it no, should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Just All right, cool. So, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. So, welcome everyone to Introduction to Cardiology. We're super excited to start the semester. And again, it's unfortunate it has to be online, but we will make the best of it. So, um, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, the outline for today will just be like mainly introductions. And then we'll go over like a little bit of the course overview of like what we'll do and then like some logistical stuff. And then we will actually dive into some content today. Um, and then uh, we'll leave space for questions um, towards the end. But if while we're going any sort of, uh, we're doing any sort of like logistical stuff right now, um, you can feel free to ask questions um, before we start the actual content as well. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But no, no worries. Um, so, all right, you can you can keep sharing the screen and we'll just like go through the slides. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to go or do you want me to go? Uh, you can go. So. Um, okay. Okay, so we'll introduce ourselves. Can you go to the next slide? Ah, sorry. No worries. All right, cool. So everyone, my name's uh, uh, Asa. I'm one of the facilitators. My pronouns are um, he, his. I'm a third year and I'm studying bioengineering. Hi everyone, um, I'm Ernest. I'm a, also third year. I'm studying public health and economics and maybe public policy. Hi there, I'm so sorry. Sam is not here. She is a wonderful teacher. You guys are all gonna love her. Um, she's currently a third year studying MCB, um, but she'll be here next week and she'll be holding most of the asynchronous lectures. So you'll definitely see her often after this. And hi, I'm Josephine. You can call me Jo. Um, I use the She series. I'll be a second. Oh, I am a second year. Um, and I'm studying IB, so integrated biology. Yeah. And Nicole, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, so I'm Nicole. I'm a third year and intend to public health, and I use she, her, hers. Well, well, great. So, yeah. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I know it's great. Okay, so um, as an overview of the course, so um, you may have, uh, or we are actually in the process of setting up our, our B courses this week. So you'll have all this info available to you, but as a general overview, um, with the bullets say, um, you'll be having uh, take home quizzes every week starting next week. Um, and of course those will, uh, the take home quiz may be, um, we might, we'll, we'll send it through, um, we might like postpone it because the B course isn't set up yet, but just expect those to happen and they're gonna be based on the lectures. Um, and the way the whole um, course setup is happening is that we're gonna be doing, as you saw in the email, the lectures are gonna be completely asynchronous, but we're gonna have what's called a journal club um, during the live section, which everyone's required to go to and where it's gonna be, um, everyone has to read a research paper and then we go over it. And so if anyone's curious, it likely will not take the entire hour and 30 minutes section because um, 
the uh, the journal club usually takes you know 30 to 30 minutes to an hour. So um, we, we wanted to be mindful about like the time you need to spend for lecture and the time you need to spend for journal club, but that's how we'll go asynchronous lecture with live journal club. And so as far as the journal club goes, you only have uh, two unexcused absences. And um, if you do have any sort of excused absence, please let us know as soon as you find out. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, we'll have the journal club um, and then uh, where you have to read a research paper every week. And then, um, we'll, and then they'll have, we'll have optional readings on B courses if you really want. Um, you know, they're kind of like extensive. Personally, I never really read them when I was <laughs> taking the course. So by all means, you don't have to, but if you're interested and you want to, go ahead. Um, and we also will have a, a fun final project where you'll just uh, do an interesting research topic within the past, past five years. And it's, it's really cool because you get to search up like all sorts of um, things to cardiology you didn't know or like um, not that diseases are cool, but like any sort of diseases that, that like you didn't know about that seem really interesting that you may want to study later. Um, and you can do all this for the final project. So you can start thinking about that now, um, who you want to pair up with um, and maybe what your topic will be. And then uh, the four sections will have um, uh, the, these are going to, these four sections are going to be like, um, like major assignments that you'll have to turn in eventually. And we'll of course give you updates like when those are due and when up, but just know that we'll have like, as far as what you need to turn in, there's going to be quizzes and then these, um, these four sections here that you'll have to actually like um, turn in on B courses. Uh, okay, cool. Um, any questions really quickly about the course overview? And you can chat or just like, um, or you can just unmute. Okay, cool. Uh, if you have any questions, you can just save them for the end too. Uh, next slide. Also, other logistical thing, we will have office hours starting next week. But um, just because we're still getting B courses and all of our classes set up, everything is still undetermined. Uh, but hopefully by the end of today, we will have our B courses set up along with like our syllabus and other things. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So this is, um, uh, this is a tentative um, uh, overview of like what we'll be discussing each week and this can definitely change depending on your all of your interests uh, because we'll actually be sending out like an interest survey to see what all of you are interested in interested in and like may want to learn about and also of course we don't know um, what else may happen in terms of like the school schedule or whatnot um, so for now like this is this this is what we're gonna do but just know that it can change for sure um, but usually it doesn't change too much so yeah, um, and again, we'll, we'll um, uh, it should, this will all be on the B courses when you get all of these. Yeah, so, uh, for uh, now, oh, sorry. Uh, oh no, go ahead, go ahead. Interrupt. Uh, but the first four weeks should be um, in flux. I, I don't think that'll change. So if you guys wanna like take a picture of the first four weeks or take a note of that, yeah, cool. Sorry, I'll go to the next slide now. No worries, no worries. All right, cool. So now we're just going to do some introductions from all of you because we, um, so like just to give some context, we actually had like, um, we had to do the rest of this class online last semester, you know, after we all went online. And it was definitely like a really rough transition from being in person to online. It was like pretty awkward in terms of like the participation and also like how involved everyone was. Well, of course, everyone was really tired and just kind of like confused about the semester. So um, uh, so yeah, so we like, yeah, before we do these introductions, I just want to let you all know that, um, at least like while you're in the journal club, the live journal club, like try to be as, as engaged and active as you feel comfortable doing just because, um, we want to keep this class like engaging and not too boring because like the, while the material is very interesting, there's a lot of it. So we, of course we want to add, like, we want to, we want to like, Try to interact with one another so we can give each other breaks during you know like uh t talking during like the um the journal clubs and also like getting to know one another as well because you also have to do projects with each other so um just like yeah be, don't don't be too afraid to just like to um speak like ask any questions or just like try to engage with the class so um we'll go ahead and do um introductions 
Um, and just your name, pronouns, your grade, your major, and then what is your spirit organ? So the T, uh, all of the facilitators will go again, and then we'll have everyone else uh, go. Wait, I'm um, sorry. Before we start, um, just if everyone can turn on their cameras so I can see everybody's lovely faces. I, I know who doesn't have their camera on. So if you can turn your camera on, that would be great. So that way, after whoever goes, they can turn their camera off and then we can popcorn so we know who's gone and who hasn't. So that way we can also better take attendance as well. So cool. Sorry, Asa, you can continue. No worries. All right, cool. So thank you, thank you Josephine. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, go ahead. So again, my name is uh, Asa. I use the HE series. I'm a third year studying bioengineering. And I think my spirit organ is like, um, Probably blood, because when I first found out blood was an organ, like I couldn't believe it. I thought it was fake. So I think it's like kind of cool that it is. So yeah. Hi. Um, like I said, my name is Ernest. I'm also a third year public health and econ. And if uh, my spirit organ would probably be my lip or a liver because I'm very hardworking. So yeah. Um, so I'm Nicole, my pronouns are she, her, hers, third year intended public health and spirit organ. It's probably like the heart because I like to, you know, reach into many different places. Hi guys, again, um, I'm Josephine, you can call me Jo. Um, I go by the she series. Um, my grade, uh, oh wait, I'm second year. I don't know, I keep on flubbing, sorry. Um, my major is IB, um, undeclared at the moment, and my spirit organ is like ASA, it's the blood. Blood is cool, I like the word coagulated, cool. Um, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a popcorn to, um, Berkeley. Hi, my name is Berkeley. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm a fourth year MEB major, and my spirit organ would be the brain because I just think it's so intricate and very cool. I'm sorry, we're, we're, we'll do popcorn style just so that we can make sure everyone goes. So you can just call out um, someone, and if, and if you don't want to uh, like, if you're afraid of mispronouncing their names, you can just type it in the chat. Oh, Berkeley, you're kind of muted. <laughs> oh, sorry. Popcorn, Heidi. Hi, I'm Heidi. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm a freshman and I'm intending to major in molecular and cell biology and possibly minor in chemistry. Um, my spirit organ is definitely the heart. I've been like super fascinated with it like since I was little and that's why I'm taking the class and I like make drawings like this like literally all the time. So uh, yeah, uh, I popcorn to Tabu. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Tavleen and uh, I, use the, I use this she series. I'm a freshman this year and uh, intending to major in MCB and my spirit organ would be eyes or the retina actually specifically. And I would like to popcorn to um, Will. Okay. Hi, my name is Will. I'm a fourth grade and majoring in MCB. I go by the He series. My spirit organ would be large intestine because I go to the bathroom often. Sorry. Okay, I popcorn uh, Min. Is that it? Hi, my name is Min. Um, you can call me she, her. Um, I'm a transfer student, so uh, I'm a junior. Um, my major is MCB and uh, my spirit organ is the brain. Yeah. So, uh, I think I will call uh, Serena.
Is Serena not here? Can you hear me now? Oh yeah, perfect. Sorry, go yes. on. Um, my name is Serena. Um, I use the She Series. Um, I'm a freshman and my intended major is Nutritional Sciences. And I guess uh, my spirit organ would be the skeleton or like bones. Um, and I'm popcorn too. Jasper? <clears throat> um, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? I think it's a little quiet. Oh, I'm sorry. It's because my uh, internet is um, really bad no at worries. Berkeley. Okay, so I'm a freshman. I used the He series. And I'm an intended chemical biology major. And my spirit organ would be um, the appendix because it's essentially useless right now. And that's what I feel, but it won't be like that. And uh, <laughs> I'll popcorn to uh, Ada Chi. Um, or it, Ada. Yeah, it's fine. Um, hi, I'm Ida. I'm a sophomore, um, I'm intended MCB, and I use the she, her pronouns, and I guess my spirit organ would be the stomach, because I love food. Um, I guess I'll popcorn to, is it Clarice? Yeah. Uh, hi guys, my name is Clarice. Um, I use the she series, and I'm a second year. Um, my intended major is a double major with MCB and pure math. And my spirit organ would probably be the heart just because I really like to run and like work out. But yeah, and then I'll pass it on to Neil. Um, hi, uh, I'm Neil. Um, I'm a second year uh, and I use the He series. And uh, my major is economics or intended to be economics. And um, I think my spirit organ would be the skin because I don't know, I just found it really cool. Uh, when I was young to learn that it's considered an organ, like it's the largest organ and like, that's what I like about it. Um, all popcorn to Esteban. Hi guys, my name's Esteban. Um, I go by the He series. Uh, I'm a first year and my major is molecular and cellular bio. My spirit organ would be the stomach because I love food. I like to eat a lot actually. And I would like to popcorn Anant. Hi everyone, I'm Anant. I use a he and his pronouns. Uh, I'm a first year and I'm majoring in microbiology. And I'd say my spirit organ is um, probably would be the kidneys because I filter all the negative stuff. Um, let's see. Who should I? I like to popcorn of, yeah, Vanessa. Hi, my name is Vanessa and I, um, my pronouns is she, her, hers. I'm a, I'm a senior and my major is business administration. And my spirit organ, I would say it's, um, it's my stomach because it allows me to eat a lot. And I would popcorn to, um, Jinsha? I'm not sure if I'm Okay. Thank you for popcorning me. Uh, hi, my name is Jin Chao. I'm a fourth year student, majoring in, in, in economics. Uh, I'm from China, and I think my spiritual organ should be stomach, because I also love food a lot. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I will Popcorn to uh, Pacing are here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Pacing. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Uh, I'm senior major in chemical biology. My spirit organ is uh, brain. And I popcorn to uh, Is there anyone who hasn't gone yet? 
I'm the last one. Has everyone gone? Okay. Uh, cool. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, so, uh, thank you for those introductions. I actually have to go right now, but before I go, some other uh, few um, few notes just to mention before we like dive into the lecture, which Josephine will do, um, is that uh, um, so as you saw earlier, something I forgot to mention. Um, so me, along with uh, Sam, our other facilitator who isn't here, will be delivering most of the asynchronous lectures. Um, so you'll be seeing our faces a lot, uh, basically. But of course, like I'm pretty sure each each facilitator TA here will um, will be delivering at least one live like uh, at least one lecture throughout the semester. So um, this if just to like expect that. And then also one last note I want to make is that um, this class has like a lot of information of it. So if you feel overwhelmed, it's totally understandable. But um, just know that you can always ask us any questions. Um, at all, like via either email or um, like during, well, maybe we'll allot like some time during um, journal, journal, um, journal club or like maybe via B courses, but don't be afraid to ask questions because there is a lot of info and it's just like a lot to take in, but it's definitely doable. And um, again, just like asking questions, I think is the best way to try to um, like absorb all the information, especially since it'll be online. And like, unfortunately we can't ask questions during the actual lecture, but. Yeah, keep that in mind, and thank you so much for uh, everyone for sharing. And I like how there are so many uh, stomach spirit organs. That was pretty cool. <laughs> All right, cool. See you, everyone. Cool. Oh, I'm so sad that Asa left. Um, but yeah, so uh, for this lecture, there is a lot of content. So I'm going to try to let you guys off a little early. I did make Ernest and Nicole co-hosts. So um, feel free to answer your questions in the chat, but if I don't answer, um, I, I'm sure Ernest and Nicole will take care of it. Thanks in advance. Um, but yeah, so thank you. It was so nice getting to know you guys. Uh, for that appendix guy, I'm sorry. I don't think you're useless. I think you're great. Um, cool. <laughs> sorry. Um, let me, um, yeah, cool. Um, go to the next slide. So now we're going to go a little deeper into cardiology. So does anyone want to, you know, pitch in and say what they think or know cardiology is? Oh, Heidi. Uh, the study of the heart and everything that has to do with the cardiovascular system. Yes. Oh my gosh. See, oh my God. Heidi is amazing. Heidi and Tavleen are really great. Sorry. They're my GBO kids. So yeah, so cardiology is the study of the heart and its functions in health and diseases. So uh, for this class, we're going to be covering not only the heart, but like interconnected systems and how that's relevant to like life today, maybe even like how it's related to COVID. So a lot of um, implications of cardiology. So whatever you guys are interested in. So please fill out the pre-semester survey. I'll give a little reminder uh, before the end of class. Um, but yeah. Um, so why is cardiology important? So this is a little outdated, um, but according to the CDC, the Center of Disease Control in 2017, more than 647,000 people in the US die from heart-related diseases. That's one in four deaths, which is a lot. And then um, it's also the number one cause of death in the US and globally for both men and women and people of different races. Um, although in some counties it's a little different, um, cancer may be the number one cause of death, but the CDC does say that um, cardiac related disease um, led deaths are going to eventually catch up, which is not good. And about 800 oh, whoa, 805,000 Americans suffer a heart attack annually. Um, so basically it is not only like um, becoming more and more relevant, but it does not discriminate. Um, everybody is starting to have more and more um, heart related diseases. So yeah, it's, it's really good that you guys are all like wanting to be in this class, whether or not you're pre-health. So yeah, go cardio. Um, so yeah, oh, sorry, there's chat. Um, oh, okay, never mind. That's not chat. Okay, never mind. Go Ernest. Um, sorry, I'm like kind of nervous. Um, 
but yeah, so here are some possible risk factors of cardiac disease. So there's diabetes, overweight and slash obesity, poor diet, physical inactivity, excessive alcohol use, pregnancy, and genetics. As you will see later on in this class, um, like even things that you don't think are necessarily um, cardiac disease related, like, you know, maintaining like dental hygiene is like very important in maintaining cardiac health. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So fun or like some fun and some not so fun facts about the heart. Um, so um, heart rate drops while you sleep. Heart attack symptoms are different in men and women. A lot of people think that this is like related to like hormones, but we're not too sure yet um, which like hormones or what's going on. But um, the number of heart attacks peak on Christmas, followed by uh, December 26th and the New Year's. So wonder why. Um, a normal heart valve is about the size of a half dollar. Heart cancer is very, oh yeah, heart cancer is very rare because heart cells stop dividing early in life. Later on, we're going to see a video of extracting a heart tumor called a uh, fibroelastoma. So that'll be really cool. And um, yeah, there are more facts in this link. I think uh, when we set up the B courses page, which will probably be tonight, all the information will be there or like all the slides will be there so you can go and watch. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna force you guys to watch this because I think it's interesting. But, um, oh wait, uh, I'm gonna go to the Google slides, sorry. Um, Oi. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, <laughs> sorry, this is like really bad. Mm. Okay. Can you guys see it? Wait, sorry, let me open up so I can see your faces. Like not if you guys can see the video. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, thanks, Ernest. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna play it. This is a case of a cardiac fibroelastoma. The patient was diagnosed with a mass on the pulmonic valve incidentally by echocardiogram. A three-dimensional transesophageal echocardiogram was performed and this shows the mass on the pulmonic valve attached to a stalk. The patient was taken to the operating room and placed on cardiopulmonary bypass. The pulmonary artery was then dissected from the aorta and the artery was opened with a knife and scissors. This is the view from the patient's head to the feet. And here you can see the fibroelastoma. Traction sutures were placed and the fibroelastoma is more clearly visualized. You can see here it's a very friable tumor that's attached to a stalk on the undersurface of one of the leaflets of the pulmonic valve. It is resected and then placed in a saline basin. Here the tumor has a frond-like appearance and resembles a sea anemone. The pulmonic valve is then inspected and there is a small defect on the undersurface of the leaflet of the valve. This defect is then closed with a fibroethabond suture. The suture is then tied and once the suture is tied it is cut. The leaflet is then tested under saline to make sure it is competent. The pulmonary artery is then closed with a running layer of fibroproline suture. This ends the case. Cool, sorry, I just thought that this video was really interesting because before taking this class, I did not know that um, heart cancer existed, um, but it does, it's just really rare, again, since um, after the heart stops developing, once it's like full size, I guess, adult size, um, it doesn't produce that many more cells, which is why didn't think it was possible, but it is, so. Um, yeah, it mostly happens with um, kids, though, which is kind of sad, but. Yeah, let me let me go back to the PDF. Sorry, I don't know why, but sometimes my slides don't work. So, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, sorry, I wanted to make sure this is all good. But yeah, tumor extraction. Um. So yeah, now we'll be looking at heart rates by different age groups. Um, in the chart, you'll notice that um, not only age groups differ in heart rate, but also athletes. Um, does anyone want to guess why that is?
<laughs> Heidi, see, Heidi's the best. Thanks, Heidi. <laughs> Um, with athletes, they get used to being able to pump a certain amount of blood and like their heart doesn't need to do as much work because they're more fit. Um, so their resting heart rate can be like a lot lower. I think that's right. I'm yeah, sure. no, 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 that that's completely correct. Thank you, Heidi. Oh my gosh, I thought it was going to be an awkward like 20 seconds. So I, I super appreciate that. But yeah, so um, just because athletes tend to have tend to condition a lot, they tend to work out a lot harder, exert a lot more force and energy. And because of this, the heart learns to kind of be more efficient with its pump. And that's why it has like, you know, like marathon runners tend to have like a blood pressure of like 40 to 60 uh, beats per minute. So that's why. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so now we'll be talking about what is actually in the heart. We'll also be talking about blood flow and stuff. So super cool. Um, but yeah, we're going to start off with three types of muscle tissue, skeletal, smooth, and cardiac. Does anybody want to, or sorry, is this too many questions? I don't know if this is like asking too many questions. Uh, it's okay. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's okay. Um, uh, yeah, so there are three types of muscle tissue. Um, does anyone want to guess which type of muscle tissue is in the heart? That's okay. <laughs> uh, so um, there are three types of, oh, oh, okay. Wait, who was that? Sorry. I'm not, oh, okay. Never mind. I, well, wow, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, wait, oh, no, Tavlin, go ahead. Tavlin's also really awesome, by the way. I, I was just asking if it's, if it's striated muscle. The what muscle? The striated with striations, like bands. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we have both the smooth and the cardiac. Is that what you're? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, sorry, trick question because there was more than one, but Tavlin got it because she's awesome. But yeah, um, yeah, cool. So um, a little bit more about these muscle types. So the smooth muscle has spindle-shaped, non-striated, um, uninucleated, sorry, I always mess up with that word, fibers um, that occur in like walls of internal organs and is voluntary. So cardiac muscles, striated, branched, uninucleated fibers occurs in the walls of the heart and is involuntary. And then finally, skeletal muscle has striated tubular multinucleated fibers and is usually attached to the skeleton and is also voluntary. So yeah, Basically, um, yeah, <laughs> I was just thinking if I had anything to add. Um, but yeah, so um, the cardiac and the smooth muscle types are divided in the heart muscle into the endocardium, the myocardium, and the epicardium. So that is all labeled here. And they're, they basically make up the, the ventricular wall of the heart. Um, and yeah. Here's some more muscle bundles of the myocardium. Later when we'll be talking about the uh, blood flow, we'll also be talking about superior vena cava. And yeah, I mean, everything is involved in blood flow, but superior vena cava and inferior vena cava is where it starts. And the cardiac muscle fibers swirl diagonally around the heart in interlacing bundles. Oh, yeah, by the way, for your quiz due next week, oh, you don't have to worry about it now, but it would be a good tip to like have the diagram like well like recognized and known. So yeah. Um cool. So now we'll be talking more about the anatomy of the heart. So yeah, um, the heart is located underneath the sternum where the ribs connect slightly left of the center of the chest. So the fibrous layer is like thicker containing like connective dense tissues that perform like a couple functions like that's around here around the heart. Can anyone actually no, sorry, that's too many questions. Um, <laughs> I'll stop at, um, asking questions. But um, basically, that fibrous layer, um, it anchors the heart just because it's like very thick, strong muscle um, with uh, surrounding tissue and prevents the heart from overfilling with um, blood during contractions. And it also protects the heart from like injury and infection as well. So it's like, basically like a cushion for the heart. Mm. 
And then, yeah, if we go inside the pericardium, which has a fibrous and membranous layer, um, which, oh wait, yeah, yeah, sorry, the fibrous layer is the pericardium, if I wasn't clear about that. Yeah, I think I said all of that. Oh, and then there's pericardial effusion. Um, pericardial, whoa, pericardial effusion is abnormal accumulation of fluid in the pericardial cavity, which then leads to an increased pressure on the heart that can negatively affect the heart's condition. So this is known as cardiac tamponade. Sorry, correct me, um, Nicole or Ernest, if I get anything wrong. But um, yeah, but that eventually leads to like increased pressure on the heart, which can negatively affect the heart's function. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, no. So here's um, a couple pictures of pericardial effusion. Um, if you can see like a normal heart, it's not as big as like, you know, you can see the fluid accumulation like over here. Um, yeah. Cool. So now we'll be talking about atriums, ventricles, and valves. So um, atriums are the chambers on the top. So we have the right and left. Well, on the diagram, like the right and left are flipped because, I don't know, they want to mess with you. But um, they're the chambers on the top that collect blood from the body. Um, they're generally smaller and have thinner walls. And ventricles are the thicker, longer chambers of the heart that work to pump the blood out of the heart. Uh, they're larger and have like thicker, dense tissue needed to pump the blood throughout the body. So yeah, because they need to pump the blood throughout the body, they tend to be like a lot thicker. So if you have a lot of like respiratory problems or like problems um, like pumping blood, you can notice like especially in like cases of like heart attack or like any cardiomyopathy, um, the um, the left ventricle is going to be like really thick and a lot um, bigger than usual just because it has to work you know, that much harder to pump blood throughout the body. And by that much effort, it's like becoming bigger, if that makes sense, sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's also the tricuspid, which is the right um, atrioventricular, we just call it like AV valve, um, which facilitates the blood flow from the right atrium to the right ventricle. And then we also have the bicuspid, which is the mitral to the left AV valve. Um, that facilitates the blood flow from the left atrium for the left ventricle. And the septum is the tissue that separates the left and right side of the heart and consists of dense muscle tissue used in contractions. So yeah, here's the pathway of the cardiac circulation. So um, yeah, so the overall goal of the blood flow is to get the blood right to the lungs so that way it can become oxygenated. Um, it enters towards the superior and inferior vena cava um, and then goes out through the aorta, which is why the aorta is kind of big. Oh, and when it comes out, it's like oxygenated. Yeah, cool. Um, but yeah, no, this diagram would be very, very important to remember for your quiz. Just tip. Um, yeah, so how does the heart beat? The heart, you, whoa. The heart beats by um, using its two nodes, the SA or the sinoatrial sinus node and the atrioventricular, the AV node. So um, these two nodes work together to regulate and act as the pacemaker of the heart by sending regulated um, electrical signals throughout the heart. And um, yeah, here's a picture right here. It, the AV node is right here and the sinus node is right here. Um, we'll be talking about this later on in class. I think like the eighth week of class. I don't know, TBD. Um, but yeah, here's some videos. Ah, I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, we're gonna watch this one. This one's kind of sad, but I think I think this one's okay. Oh wait, ah, sorry. Whoa.
cool. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, never mind. His his heart. Um, I okay, never mind. Wrong video. But basically, um, after this, his pacemaker starts working again. Uh, pacemaker is basically like, um, a machine that like regulates the heart activity to make sure that if it fails, it can like kind of jumpstart it back up by like sending, um, kind of like electric electric you know shocks to kind of like wake up the heart and like hey, you gotta start working. Um, sorry, I'm gonna go back to the other page. So yeah, no, he doesn't die, I don't think. Yeah, sorry, I was, I think the other one, I don't know, but yeah, cool. So sorry you guys had to see that. Um, okay, sorry, I'm gonna go back to the last slide. Mm. Okay, yeah, but a pacemaker is just basically a machine that sends like electrical signal back to the heart to be like to kind of like start the heart again when if it ever fails. Um, yeah, so now we're going to be talking about innervations of the heart. I, I think I can ask a question now. I don't know. Um, but does anyone know what heart innervations are? Cool. It's okay. That's what that's what this class is for. Um, <laughs> uh, Okay, never mind. I, I thought someone was going to intervene. That's okay. Um, but um, innervating, um, innervations of the heart, it just basically means to kind of like put the nerves into something. So um, to get them, you know, all energized and ready to go um, to start them up again, just like what the pacemaker does, basically. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to be talking about things that kind of like innervate the heart, but also kind of help it rest a little bit. So um, this is due to the autonomic nervous system. If you guys took psychology in high school, or like maybe if you took like general bio MCB 32, um, you learned about this. Um, but the autonomic nervous system com consists of like two parts, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. So if you ever heard of like fight or flight response or like rest or digest response, that's what this is. Parasympathetic is rest and digest and sympathetic is fight or flight. So the parasympathetic system is involved in maintaining homeostasis and, the and is responsible for the body's at rest and digest activity. Um, it relaxes the body and slows down many high energy functions. Um, so basically it um, kind of maintains the balance. If, yeah, balance, homeostasis, same thing. Um, sympathetic uh, nervous system controls the body's responses to a perceived threat and is also responsible for the fight or flight response and it prepares the body for intense physical activity. So this is why when you like see someone you're in love with or like you're afraid of something, your eye, your pupil dilates. Oh, well, fun fact if you didn't know, but, but that's because of the sympathetic nervous system. Or like when you get the adrenaline rush, that's also sympathetic nervous system. Um, parasympathetic system is like kind of a little more boring, but without it, I think we'd all be dead. So kind of nice. Um, but yeah, so in this picture, we have all the body parts that are connected with the different parts of the nervous system. So yeah, and um, these are for different purposes. So um, parasympathetic and sympathetic um, nerves can be innervated by multiple body parts and like vice versa, but um, yeah, they do different things. Um, yeah, I don't, I guess I can watch this video. I don't remember what this video is. Sorry, guys. Um, ah, but does anyone have any questions so far? We don't have journal club today, so the, um, it's not going to be that long. Um, Oh, questions. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Sorry. Um, Asa explained it earlier, kind of. Um, but basically, Journal Club, we're going to assign, you know, a scientific journal article um, or article ah, um, every week that you guys have to read. Uh, we'll also send like supplemental material too, but that's not necessary. That's completely optional. And um, it'll be after the asynchronous lecture. Um, and then we're going to go into like groups and talk about it and its relevance and like kind of analyze it. It, it, it sounds kind of easy. Yeah, so one lecture per week. Um, well, I mean, one asynchronous lecture and then one synchronous journal club. Yeah. So um, it sounds kind of easy, but I, I don't know. I, I think a lot of the subjects we'll be talking about and all the papers we'll be going through are like very like professionally written with like a specific type of jargon. So I, I don't know. I remember last semester, it was like kind of hard for me to like go through all of these like journal clubs like last minute just because I, I read the articles last minute, which is bad. But yeah, don't do that. Um, and that's what journal club is. Um, can we? <gasps> cool. The men's 200 meters final, one of the great occasions at Rio 2016. Usain Bolt continuing his quest for even more Olympic glory. Always the entertainer, the Jamaican in lane six. Of La Maitre in. Oh. Bolt made a brilliant start. By the time he swept around the bend, victory was within his grasp. Yeah. I think what was meant to be highlighted by this video was the, the, the adrenaline rush that kind of like appeared earlier. You know how he's like not really, he's like not ahead at first, but then later on he like gets that adrenaline rush and then he runs really fast and then he beats everyone. Yeah, I think that's what we're supposed to see. So cool. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. I very technologically impaired. Um, Heidi and Tavleen can tell you that. Um, but um, yeah, OK, cool. So yeah, now we're going to be talking about the innervation of the heart. We're going to talk about the um, different systems that we just talked about. So the nerves regarding the parasympathetic um, nervous system are called vagal nerves. So uh, the right vagus nerve primarily innervates the SA node, and the left vagus nerve primarily innervates the AV node. So the atrial muscle is innervated by basically the vagus nerves. So um, just um, keep in mind that the vagus nerves decrease the heart rate and force contraction. Um, this is kind of like, yeah, you should, guys should know this because like rest and digest. So yeah, the heart rate would be decreased. Um, sympathetic nerves, on the other hand, fight or flight, it's um, where the efferent nerves are disturbed throughout the atria. So SA and AV nodes are affected. Um, they're also distributed through the ventricles. Um, and yeah, they increase the heart rate, obviously, because like fight or flight, and then they force contraction. So yeah, here's just a deeper picture of it. Sorry, for some reason, I can't get it full screen. There we go. Cool. So yeah, now we're going to be talking about a uh, sadder but equally cool topic. We'll be talking about heart failure. So uh, what is heart failure? Does any, actually no, too many questions, sorry. Um, heart failure is a condition in which the heart can't pump enough blood to meet the body's needs. So in many cases, the, the heart can't fill um, with enough blood. And because of that, the body kind of like reacts, like it kind of like shuts down because it has insufficient blood yeah. Um, so um, it increases the heart activity during the heart failure. Um, it leads to increased force of muscular contractions, increases stroke volume, increases um, peripheral vasoconstriction to maintain blood pressure. 
Um, so vasoconstriction, um, it's it's basically what it sounds like. It's where it, your vessels are constricted. Um, and yeah, these compiled effects accelerate disease progression and increased mortality in heart failure. So um, sometimes you don't really know like when you're having like any heart problems, but a good like test is like if you're having any like unusual short of breath, like um, chest pain, like tiredness, leg swelling, also like left arm, like that's that's pretty like, I don't know, um, common knowledge, um, but also like, um, yeah, um, any problems with like blood coagulation that also could be, oh, coagulation is, by the way, it's like when it like solidifies kind of, it like the blood clumps up and yeah, um, cool. Oh, okay, so now we're going to do Kahoot. Hopefully I will be technologically sufficient in knowledge to do this. Oh, chat. Ah. Yes, the slides will be posted. Um, the slides will be on B courses when we publish the um, B courses page, which will be tonight or tomorrow. Um, do you guys want us to send it to you right after this lecture? I mean, we can. Okay, cool. Good to know. Don't worry, Ernest. I, I got it. Um, cool. Um, but okay, now we're gonna kahoot. Sorry, I like I have really a lot of tabs, so I'm I'm gonna try and like find it. Oh wait, I have it here. Mm, okay. So are you guys ready for kahoot? Do you guys all know what kahoot is? Let me let me turn you guys on so I can see your faces. Yeah, everyone knows what Kahoot is. Cool. Wait, Tavleen, do you know what Kahoot is? Sorry, I didn't mean to like put you on blast. Okay, cool. I know in some places they don't use Kahoot, so sorry, just making sure. Tavleen's from India, by the way. If you guys are in India, like hit her up. She's cool. Um, yeah. Can you guys see the Kahoot screen? Oh wait, no, no, no. Ah, don't look at the answers. Okay, cool. Um teach. Um, I hope you guys didn't see any of the answers, um, but if you did, I guess that's okay too. Okay, I think it's loading. Okay. curious um cool um i think that's oh wait no we're missing a few people do are the people missing do you guys just not want to play should we make you play anyways i don't know wait ah let me let me try and open up okay i guess we should just wait for the 18 people right right ernest i don't know Wait, chat. 
Oh, there's 50. Oh, wait. Yeah, not including us. Okay, I'm dumb. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Um, I guess the last person just doesn't want to play. That's okay. That's good. Um, wait. Wait, Ernest, I need help. How do we? Oh, wait, it's a start. <laughs> cool. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to press start now. What is the risk factor for cardiovascular disease? Ernest, are you playing too? Oh, <laughs> you should. <laughs> um, let's see if you guys know this. <gasps> Yay! One person got it wrong, but technically you're right because diabetes is a risk factor. We should have wrote like risk factors in plural. I get why that could have been confusing. Yeah, cool. <gasps> Yay, oh my god, Heidi, I'm so proud. You're awesome. Mm. True or false, around 805,000 Americans suffer from heart attack. I'm so sorry, I remember flubbing on this number, so I did say it, though. Um. Oh, also, for that last person who didn't join, the game joining still open with a game pin on the bottom. So if you ever feel like joining, you, you, can, you can join. Um, cool. Awesome. You guys are good. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. Sorry. A lot of feelings. But go, Serena. Mm. What is unique about cardiac muscle? Oh, sorry, I didn't like emphasize, but I, I did state it. <gasps> Wait, maybe not. I don't remember. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Test your knowledge. Cool. Yeah, so inner. The, the intercalated discs. For those who said striation, they there are striation for cardiac muscles, but also um, smooth muscles have striation too. I think Tavleen mentioned it earlier. So like, if you listen to Tavleen, good job. Um, and then yeah, regeneration. I think mo like multiple of them also have regeneration. And I'm so sorry we did not talk about the presence of actin and myosin. I do see why you got that. I think smooth muscle cells also have um, actin and myosin in it. So sorry guys, I'll, I'll be more specific next time. Um, <gasps> Neil, good job. See, you're not an appendix. I think you're the appendix guy. See, not useless. Um, true or false? Pericardial fusion is where there is an abnormal accumulation of air in the, oh, this is a trick question. Or not really. If you guys listen to me carefully, you would know. Oh no, okay, okay. This is like a trick question because even though I did say it, um, it is the accumulation of something in pericardial space. It's just that that something is um, not air, but it's fluid. So for those who got it like wrong, it's okay. I understand. I would have probably got it too. Oh, no, no. It's okay, Anat. You're, you're awesome. I think you're like a stomach person. I don't remember. But yeah, good job. Um, sorry, next question. I'm having trouble clicking on things. Uh, <laughs> um, next time, maybe Ernest can hold the kahoot. Um, <laughs> um, brain, wait, who's brain? Is there someone actually named brain? I don't know. Um, you might want to message us if your name isn't brain. Oh, wait, no. Your name on the participants tab should probably be the same. So I, think, I think we're good. Oh, oh my god. MCB major, obviously. Go Min. Um, what is the name of this part of the heart? Oh, hopefully, I, we, okay, I'm sorry, that, that was my bad, we didn't talk about it, but it's also, I guess, a testament to your knowledge, ah, oh, sorry, guys, um,
I'm so sorry. Yeah, that is the left ventricle. But if anybody put the um, apex, I, 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 I wouldn't take off. Oh, wait, no, apex isn't even, that's not even an option. Never mind. Okay. Um, yeah, for left aorta, um, aorta is on top and then a uh, ventricle is on bottom. And I think, Oh yeah, and the left and rights are mixed up. I did say that. So like the last, what you think is left is like right on the heart. So yeah, for those who got it wrong, I understand. You're good. Um, next question. Sorry. I like looking at your faces. So I have the pictures right on top of my screen. So it's harder to click. <gasps> Brain, you're in a row. You're, oh my God, I can't talk. You're on a roll, awesome men. And Heidi, oh my god, Heidi and Tablin are second and third. That's hecka awesome. Y'all are cool. I mean, everyone else is too, but like, sorry. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, let's go to the next one. What is the name of this part of the heart? Follow the red arrow. Oh my god, I'm so, okay, this, this is my bad. I don't think we had a slide. Okay, next semester, Ernest, we need to add, a, like, a uh heart and like labels we did that last okay sorry this is like i'm sorry i'm like very unprofessionally talking right now um yeah that is the mitral valve we did talk about it we didn't really point at it though um but there's the tricuspid the mi mitral valve and the bicuspid valve so oh wait and and pulmonary so um yeah mitral's on the right or like the okay on your right, not the heart right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh my God, the same order. It's a tough, tough match. But I believe you guys, I believe in you. Oh my God, words. Um, what is the name of this part of the heart? Follow the red, I'm so sorry guys. Oh, okay, we, we talked, we, I pointed it out. I, I, yeah, cause, cause blood flow. Remember guys, that's where all the blood, the oxygenated blood exits the heart. <gasps> yeah, oh my God, yay, most of you guys got it. Okay, pulmonary artery, very close. Um, It's, the pulmonary artery is like right below, like in the pulmonary vein as well. They're like, they're really close. So I understand that that arrow could have been like, kind of vague, but I, I understand. Um. <gasps> Tavlin, Heidi, no. Um, oh wait, no, Heidi, you're still there, never mind. Um, but yeah, go Jasper. Um, okay, I guess the rest of this is just anatomical. Did we talk about this? I think so. Oh yeah, no, we definitely talked about this. Guys, if you guys don't get this, I'll be kind of sad. <laughs> Yay, most of you got it. Um, uh, for, uh, uh, for the inferior vena cava, if you, one way to think about it is like superior is like superior. So like above and like inferior is like below so like they they look the same but oh wait chat sorry um oh oh no it's okay yeah oh Heidi you're you're good you've been doing so well so far it's it's okay um you're good um yeah so oh sorry I can't click if this was a clicking class I would I would fail um but yeah so yeah superior vena cava did oh yeah Pulmonary artery, that makes sense because it's on like, it's on a similar, it's in a similar area. And inferior, I understand, but it's like below, not above. Okay, we're good, we're good. Um, let me see. It's okay, Heidi, it's just one place. You're, you're so good. And like, everybody's doing so well. I'm like really happy. You guys make me really happy. Um, what is the name of the, oh wait, sorry, more anatomical question. I'm so sorry, um, we did not talk about it, but it was like, it's the one thing we didn't talk about. So um, <laughs> if you guys use process of elimination, you guys can, you guys can um, see it. Yay, yeah, septum is the part, um, 
Right, ventricle I get because the, the arrow can be like kind of vague. It's like, right, it's like the septum is the dividing line that separates the left and right ventricles. Um, yeah, and it's, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it. Um, I guess, yeah, A for effort. Cool. And like most of you guys got it right. So thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Um, oh, see, oh my God, Heidi. Um, and like everyone else, I'm like also really proud of you guys. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and Tavlin, you made your way up. How many people? Oh, oh no. Oh my God. Wait, <laughs> Ernest, did we fix this question? <laughs> I think the number should be the same. Okay, never mind. Okay, Ernest fixed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. That's like, I think that's the one question where most people got it right. So like, good job guys. For t Oh, well for two, I, I understand. Cause like we, we put the slides in like two people. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You're good. I mean, I think Asa and um, Sam will be teaching most of yours anyways. I think the rest of us are going to work on like more logistics, like the quizzes and stuff. So, and journal club. So, yeah, you'll see us there. Oh, nice. Cool. Um, <gasps> Tavlin, you're on a roll. Cool. I'm sorry. I can't see anyone else beyond this point. So, like, go, everybody. But like also Serena, Tavlin, Jasper, and Heidi, and then you guys are cool. Um, which nervous system increases the heart rate? So like increased heart rate, think like adrenaline rush, think like maybe fight or flight. <gasps> Yay! Um, okay. Somatic nervous system is like, like, voluntary, like, how do I explain? Okay, it's like, it's like body movement. It's like, um, okay, so parasympathetic and sympathetic sound similar. Just remember that sympathetic's the fight or flight one. Um, somatic is a part of the parasympathetic oh wait no it's it's a part it's a part of a different portion of the nervous system it it controls like all of your voluntary movements so yeah cool sorry i should really review these questions before um i i play them anyways good job guys i mean you guys know who you are i'm not gonna you guys are all the same names then <laughs> cool mm. True or false? Cardiac cancer is one of the common disease. Okay, we talked about this, guys, for like a little too long. I know, I'm sorry, but you guys should get this right. <gasps> Yay! I'm so sorry for the three people who didn't. I didn't mean to like, yeah, no, you guys are like awesome and smart and cool too. So yeah, just be, it's, it's just really uncommon because after the heart stops developing, it doesn't really produce that many more cells. And like cancer is just basically like reproducing too many cells and like none of them are dying and that's why um woo. <laughs> um it's not um common and if like it's most common in kids sorry yeah cool oh my god that's it oh no i'm kind of sad to like end this lecture um <gasps> yay oh my god you guys are all awesome I mean, I'm not surprised, Min. Min's been, like, killing it. But, like, everyone else, good job. And, like, Serena and um, Tavlin, you guys, too. You're on the leaderboard. So, like, good job. Um, yeah, wait. Ah, oh, chat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the brain is the superior organ. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, but, like, the brain can be dead, and, like, you can be alive still, so, like, I don't, I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, um, yeah, the quiz will be based off of the slides and the lecture, just be, well, like, I won't be testing you, like, who played soccer and, like, had a heart attack, but, like, we will be testing you on, like, what, what, um, was presented, I, I guess the slides, um, 
but I mean, I lectured based off of the slides, so like, I don't know. Um, are the quizzes, are, Ernest, are the quizzes open now? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you on that okay yeah um, when we um announce that there yeah. will be a quiz we'll let you know if the quiz is open no yeah we'll, we'll like we'll, we'll let you know by tonight well i also i'll post it an out announcement later onto the okay quiz. yeah cool thank you by the way and yeah is that it for the chat okay yeah cool i think let me see if that's it I'm glad this was like kind of, oh, okay, yeah, announcements. I did tell you guys that there was a pre-semester, sorry for telling you to fill it out before telling you what it is. Um, a pre-semester survey for this course will just be talking about like more about yourself and like what you're interested in. So that way, <laughs> yeah, you do need the heart to be alive. Wait, aren't you MCB Neuro though, Min? I thought you are MCB Neuro, no? Oh, okay, never mind. Different oh. MCV. Okay, I, 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 uh, yeah. Anyways, um, so yeah, it'll just um, be where you talk more about yourself and like what you're interested in. So that way, if there's a specific topic you want us to lecture about, we can try to accommodate. Um, yeah, um, we'll send out that um, announcement via email after lecture. Um, there's also a take take home quiz um not not really take home but um it'll be due next tuesday at 11 59 um so by the time we set up our b courses page we'll have the quiz there um and don't worry ernest i can make it i feel bad i know you're gonna do a lot of work so or i'll i'll, I'll do the quiz um and yeah um oh yeah and start start thinking about your groups and topics for the final project if you guys know anyone already yeah feel free to like mingle if not we can force you into like some speed dating icebreakers next week um yeah more information on office hours okay i did talk about office hours so we will be holding them after next week probably and so if you need help with anything like applying to research it doesn't have to be like cardiac related because like Ernest has some like really great tips and like um, um, everyone else too has like a lot of good information. Asa is like really, really smart. So like if you guys have any questions, like let us know. We'll let you know when we'll be free on B courses uh, when we publish it. Um, so yeah, does anyone have any additional questions? No? Okay, sorry. I'm like scrolling through all the participants right now to see you guys like shake your head yes or no. Okay, so I think we're good. I'm so sorry about the beginning. I, I've been having technical difficulties, so sorry about that. But um, cool, I guess if that's it, if Nicole or Ernest have anything else to add? Um, yeah, just keep an eye out for the announcement to MP courses. I'll I'm like almost done with it and it should be posted soon. Yeah, and again, if you guys have any questions about today's lecture, feel please feel free to like contact me. I didn't know that we were going over like actual content this lecture, so I was like, ah. but um, yeah, so sorry in advance and like let me know. And if that's all, um, it was really nice meeting you guys. Uh, fill out the pre-semester survey by Wednesday and we'll see you next week. Yeah, during journal club. Bye. Wait, chat. Sorry, I'm like clicking on it. Bye. Bye, Serena. You look cool. Um, bye, Tavleen. Um, oh, oh, thank you. Oh, thanks, you guys. Uh, do you have any questions, Min, or are you leaving? Oh, okay. Bye. Sorry. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>